Hello, my name is Bonnie DeCade, and I'm going to be presenting today on teaching multiculturalism, diversity and related issues, challenges, and pedagogy. I have two caveats I'd like to share with you, first of all, before I get started. First of all, even though um, the focus of my talk is talking about multiculturalism as it relates to race in this country, I hope that my uh, comments and my observations and suggestions are generalizable to all areas of diversity um, and intersectionality. I just focused on the literature and the background that was related to uh, race because that really is an excellent template for looking at these kinds of issues and the unique challenges that are, are to be presented. The second caveat is this. At times, it may appear that I'm being somewhat redundant because even though I try to look at characteristics um, of the um, participant, be it the teacher or the student, and reactions and responses of the participant, be it the student or the uh, teacher, sometimes those two aspects um, morph into one another, but they're both related. So those are the two caveats that I wanted to um, talk about. The reason that I believe that teaching issues that are related to multiculturalism, diversity, um, and all aspects of those kinds of things present unique challenges are really can be looked at in terms of four different focuses. First, the content of the topic of multiculturalism, diversity, um, characteristics, labeling, etc. Second, student characteristics, that is things that the students are, that come into the class, um, experiences they've had, as well as their responses to the content and interacting with the content. Those same two factors um, as it relates to teachers are also something I think that makes this content area um, unique in terms of what we need to pay attention to, that is our characteristics as the professor or the instructor in the class, as well as our response directly to the material and interacting with our students as they interact with the material. The fourth consideration is that I believe there needs to be more flexibility and in some ways more strategizing about the pedagogy that we use when introducing this material because I think we need to be more creative um, because of the former three factors in terms of the content. So this is how um, my talk is organized. At the end, I'm going to talk about some specific materials that I have used um, and would suggest for you to consider as a sort of a template. Okay, what is it that's unique about the content of this topic? First of all, I think because um, we do a lot of um, social media, and uh, there have been many issues related to multiculturalism, diversity, lack of cultural competency um, in our country. Often students come in believing that they pretty much know everything about this topic and really aren't expecting to learn anything new. And I think that's perhaps a different stance, a different perspective than when students approach other materials um, at the college level. Also, I think there's an expectation when you say multiculturalism or diversity that what people are going to learn about is the other. And the other is generally anybody who's not white. So the expectation that we're going to learn all the character make that make a Native American a Native American or an African American an African American, that's going to be the content. And that really isn't the content. It's so much more. Um, the information that is involved in this area really relates to consciousness raising on the part of the learner. And that means that the learner is going to be faced with um, some challenging misconceptions and some challenging um, ways of looking at things that they've always taken for granted. And that's a lot more than just an increase in factual knowledge. And I think that's a different um, approach is necessary than other kinds of um, content that students learn in various areas in, in um, psychology as well as in college. Because of the nature of um, the content in multiculturalism, diversity, cultural competency, students are going to need to challenge themselves and challenge what they have understood about the world and who they are in it before. And I think that makes um, this material sometimes impact in an emotional way that is not normal or not typical in college learning. 
And also students aren't aware of how much misinformation when they approach other kinds of classes. They know they don't know things, but they may not have a lot of inf misinformation because they don't have a lot of information, period. With this um, and the related information that is going to be imparted, it becomes very clear very soon that there has been some mislabeling, misnomer, and just plain wrong things that um, students have learned to date about this area that have to be corrected. And I also think the uh, final area that um, is really important to teach is something that people don't expect to learn about or talk about, especially our students, and that's whiteness. What does it mean? What is the significance? How is that part of the label when we talk about demographics and culture? That is a new and unexpected area, and that, I think, because we're not used to talking about it as an entity, presents different challenges in terms of the content. In terms of student um, characteristics, the majority of students in this country in colleges are white, Caucasian, of Western European um, extraction. That's also um, very important because in various schools, like say a historically black school or a school that um, has more variety, they're going to be interacting with people um, differently than they have before, especially around this topic, and so are other people. The reason for this is that this is a very segregated country and people often grow up in um, silos where people look like them, think like them, or so they think, um, practice the same cultural customs and the white dominant culture takes that for granted and sets that as the standard. So often our students, particularly our Caucasian students, don't see themselves in a racialized society as part of that racial definition. And that's very important. So they've accepted the norm of middle class values, white middle class values, as do uh, people of culture. Color often as being the norm and the thing against every, which everything else must be judged. That's not the case, but that reflects um, attitudes that a student comes in with, which reflects where they were raised and their socioeconomic group, etc. Privilege, which is something that will be discussed, is often invisible to those that have it, and it's not so invisible to those that don't have it, and that becomes a challenge. Marginalized groups are often very aware of privileges that they don't have, but they may not be aware of other privileges they do have, say able-bodied privilege or things of that sort, or religious privilege. So there is a need to raise consciousness um, before addressing certain issues and raise consciousness about current attitudes. And these are attitudes, again, that are characteristics of the students because they've been socialized. They were a blank slate when they were born, but then their society, their families all impacted on them as well as the social media. There is another aspect that I think our students, um, no matter who they are, enter um, college with, and that is the aspect that learning is an objective thing and new information is objective and that there's not an emotional or subjective component. The reality is in this content area, we recognize very soon on that nothing is objective. It's very biased, including the, the uh, research and the terminology that we use, which is why it is always morphing. Um, so students come in from wherever they are, if they come in from um, places in this country, if they were socialized in the United States of America, they're coming in from segregated environments because that's the way our society is, no matter where you live, um, but there are certain areas and places where it's more so, but people often develop, students develop attitudes that they have already because of those aspects of their socialization that they're not aware of, and those um, are challenged from the beginning, and that is not expected, and that's something students enter with. The perceptions that, um, the self-perceptions that students have about themselves go to their core identity, and that ends up um, being challenged early on in their place in the world. That is why I think multicultural um, teaching and cultural competency is so important in the university college and community college setting because this is the first opportunity to really address that forthright um, in a way that gives information 
encourages critical thinking about that information and challenges that worldview. And there are not many other aspects of our culture where that can be done. So our population is ripe for that, if you will. Another aspect that I mentioned before that um, makes this a unique area um, for students and one that we as instructors need to be cognizant of are the various responses um, that students may have to the material that may actually serve as a block for the material. And we can do things to make them or help them become more open. But let's talk about some of those reactions. Um, there is a defensiveness that often may occur because, again, particularly white students may feel very, very um, defensive because they feel they're being attacked. This information um, challenges the worldview, challenges the um, way that they may have looked at um, their environment. Often, for instance, students say, well, I don't know anything about race. I, I have nothing to do with that because, you know, I grew up in an all-white community. Well, that's exactly why you know a whole lot about race because the fact that your community was all white in a country whose demographics is not says that's very much part of the experience. So again, um, sometimes the emotional reaction to that is defensiveness. Um, sometimes it's anger. Robin D'Angelo speaks to something called white fragility, um, which is a response that has to do with the fact that um, often in Caucasian um, households in white communities, race is not a topic of conversation because it doesn't need to be. There are no challenges that are negative. Um, there's no protectiveness, if you will. And so often when students start hearing uh, phrases, start thinking about these things, they get very uncomfortable they get very defensive, as I mentioned before, and they sort of freeze up or shut down. They, they easily get overwhelmed, especially if they are also not um, socialized to deal with discomfort and stress. So white fragility is another reaction that you need to be aware of as you're trying to engage um, students to engage with material. Anger at being challenged and at having... Um, precepts that are often touted by people they value, not only former teachers, but uh, family members in indeed society as a whole. To have that um, those precepts challenged can sometimes bring about anger. And there's also, I think, sometimes a sense of embarrassment at using words and talking about things that are taboo, that are uncomfortable, that people are not practiced at talking about. For students who are not white students, for students perhaps who are um, BIPAC, that is um, black, indigenous, people of color, or people from other countries who have been socialized, students who have been socialized in other places, there may be some embarrassment in talking about um, the content and the material because there is um, a lack of knowing what words to use, what words might offend, what words might not offend, how far can you go. And also, I think this is a new sense of embarrassment in the classroom. In most classroom settings, a student might um, be embarrassed because they don't know things, but after all, that's why they're in the classroom. They may feel even more um, unable to engage in the material in this type of topic because they never expected it to be a topic. Also, I think there is a, a, a concern that's different in the classroom with issues of culturalism in that um, students are more concerned on how will other people judge them um, in terms of sharing their views. It's one thing to be judged because you don't know something that's expected in the classroom, but to be judged as being perhaps a racist, that's a really negative label. And I think students are very afraid of that. Um, I think perhaps students of color or students who are not white might be concerned with being judged as being responding like the stereotype or being too angry or um, people expect that they know what you're going to say because they've already fit you into a category. So there can be all sorts of other um, aspects that result in a student reacting to discussions and learning new materials and then interacting with that material with both the instructor and other students. Teachers' characteristics Teachers, those from this country, that is the United States of America, who are socialized in the United States of America, have the same um, issues that students have. That is, um, they have been 
for the most part, um, socialized in very segregated places um, where for some race may be a, a topic, but for most it is not a topic and they may feel very uncomfortable dealing with issues, t- using the language and engaging in those discussions and the material. Students' perception of um, the instructor may be something the instructor is very aware of for the first time in terms of their identity, their race, their um, privileged status, or how much they fit the dominant culture characteristics, because um, that may impact on their credibility um, as they perceive it um, by the the, um, student. That is, there is an interaction between are they a member of the dominant Um, culture and they're just giving information that they are academically suited to give, or are they not of the dominant culture and therefore they have less credibility because of socialization factors and biases that, again, the student doesn't even know they have. The teacher is going to be much more aware of those factors in this type of discussion with this kind of material and may be somewhat self-conscious about it, whether they are a BIPOC, that is a B-I-P-O-C, or a white person. For students, for teachers rather, who have not been socialized in the United States of America, they may feel um, somewhat inadequate or somewhat uncomfortable with the information because they may be aware that they may not appreciate the nuances that are related to um, diversity, racialization, et cetera, systemic racism in the United States of America because we have a very unique history in terms of multiculturalism, in terms of systemic racism, in terms of the legacy of slavery um, and the different trajectory of different groups who have come into this country and some have been able to come under that rubric of whiteness, well, whereas others have not. There are nuances that are part of the learning of multiculturalism and diversity that are very nation specific. So those who have not um, been socialized may have um, or may feel that they have an insensitivity or a lack of awareness or appreciation. And again, the interaction with the students may heighten that. In terms of teachers' reactions, um, the teacher separates and there is a power differential between the teacher and the student but there may be things that are said in the classroom where the teacher may feel it appropriate to step out of that power differentiation and that to step out of that role. Um, there may be times that a teacher will react as a person and be either angry or disappointed or impatient with where the student is coming from. And the reaction may be visceral because um, the topic may also interact with the uh, teacher's sensibilities in a personal way. If the teacher is a person of color, um, they may not have as much patience with um, the lack of knowledge because the lack of knowledge may be related to other factors that they resonate. And so they must monitor themselves in a different way than um, they would normally. Both, no matter who the teacher is, there may be a heightened sense of vulnerability with regard to this material because of the ramifications and um, because of the intensity of emotional reactions within the classroom. The teacher may also be in a position of feeling that they need to protect another student from the interaction because, say, that student is one or two people of color or, let's say, they are one or two people Uh, one or two people who are white in a a predominantly black setting. That may be very uncomfortable. Or perhaps the student, again, is a student from a different culture, a different country, who feels completely inadequate to this discussion that's going on if it focuses on things that are happening within the United States. Um, Another aspect is that often um, teachers may choose um, to use their own narrative or a level of self-disclosure because they may feel this facilitates the student's understanding or makes it safe and is an encouragement or model for a student to do the same. Again, remember, because of the content, the student is needing to reflect on not only their own views, but the views of people that they hold closely and they may not be used to this level of self-disclosure, and therefore the teacher may think it appropriate for them to model self-disclosure. 
that may be uncomfortable for some teachers and wherever that line is may not work it um, the same way for all people. And there may be an opportunity where, or an event where a, stu- a teacher discloses too much and then doesn't know how to walk that back. So again, um, there may be many other reactions that happen because of the content of this material that the teacher may need to find um, support systems or an objective uh, person outside the classroom, another peer, where they can run various um, things by them and, and get another perspective on what is going on. And again, they may simply not be as comfortable with the material as they are other um, areas that they teach that um, has more objective learning um, that does not interact in a personal manner. <clears throat> Excuse me. All of these things, um, in my opinion, mean that there needs to be a pedagogical flexibility that um, and an awareness that we don't always bring to the classroom because it's not always as necessary. Things to consider in terms of pedagogy um, and introducing material um, that is unique, I believe, to this content area are things, for instance, like the demographic of the campus. A campus that is very large and somewhat diverse is very different than a campus that is, say, very small, one religious group or one ethnicity, or a campus that has a wide variety of socioeconomic groups, etc. All of those impact on the content how that content will be reacted to and remembering that the student is going to leave the classroom and hopefully discuss things, um, but how open um, a student may or may not be to the material may very well um, reflect the demographics of the campus and why they chose to come to that particular community. Um, A community um, campus, a community college campus may be different in some areas And it may not be different in other areas. The campus climate in terms of discussions about these kinds of issues, there may be things that have gone on on campus, challenges. There may be demonstrations on campus. There may have been um, actually no discussion of uh, diversity issues or GLBTQ issues on campus. Again, the um, instructor needs to be aware of that because that's also going to impact, and it also brings in an opportunity sometimes for one to use an incident on campus and put it in the context of the material and the relevancy. So that can be very, very helpful. The diversity of a given classroom, both in terms of levels of maturity, say whether or not you have freshmen, sophomores, seniors, as well as other kinds of diversity or lack thereof in a classroom, will also impact on how the material is um, handled and the quality of the discussion and the kinds of questions that may resonate well with the classroom. Different styles of openness in a classroom, that is how articulate a given classroom is, is very important. Um, And sometimes it is um, helpful to establish rules of engagement and to be clear about the language that is appropriate to use and the labels that will be acceptable and the labels that will not be acceptable and how students can signal other students that you have crossed a boundary, I'm not comfortable with this, etc. cetera. Um, the students have, when they come into the room and what you need to be aware of in terms of pedagogy is people are often exposed to inaccurate information or different um, realities about history and what did and did not occur and what the various causes were. And again, um, there will be different levels in any given classroom, and it's kind of helpful to know what people's histories are and where where they learned what they learned. Um, And an openness to the concept of being Um, biased or having stereotypes, but not being aware of that. Um, Often students are unaware and unwilling to accept the fact that we are all um, socialized in unconscious ways, and in some ways, therefore, we are not responsible for some of our beliefs because we didn't know we were developing them and we didn't develop them on purpose. 
any given classroom, it may be more or less open to um, exploring issues of implicit bias, et cetera. And you may want to engage in some activities that help, um, if you will, um, help your students to become more open to that possibility and to be able to take it less critically and less defensively and the nature and levels of maturity in a given classroom. Because of um, the challenges of um, cultural diversity, cultural competency, multi multicultural learnings, I think it's really important for the instructor to have a sense of what are their goals, um, not only for the material, but how they expect the students, how they would like the students to be able to use the materials and how they would like this to play into their students' growth, both as students and as members of our cultural our culture. So I think it's important to then look at some of the goals that um, may be important for any given instructor in terms of how will I know this is effective pedagogy um, versus just putting the material out there. So these are some of the goals that, that I have um, as an instructor in terms of dealing with this material. I think it's very important to correct um, historical misinformation, even though psychology classes are not typically history classes, in learning about cultural diversity, multiculturalism, and all the related issues that have to do with psychological realities, the misinformation is um, an important aspect of that. Um, understanding how we got there psychologically um, and what those attitudes and perceptions were that might have just plain been wrong or um, misstated. I think it's important for an instructor be, to be aware of going from or starting with material that is less threatening, less challenging, um, less likely to make a student uncomfortable to gradually going into material that might be more challenging and the authors of those types of material. I think it's important for students to be as open to learning as possible and in order for them to be open to learning about material that challenges who they are and perhaps the people that they have admired, like family members in the past, it's important for students to feel good about themselves where they are, that it is okay to be in the dominant culture, um, even if we're going to criticize some of the aspects of the systemic um, issues that have been put in place by the dominant culture. So I think it's important for students to feel good about themselves and to be able to own who they are before um, challenging some of those aspects. I think it's important to allow students opportunities for personal reflections in a way that only they know about, personal reflections um, and self-growth in a way where they are interacting and getting some feedback from the instructor and personal reflection and interaction in terms of group discussions with one another. That means three different levels of exploration, and I think it's important for um, instructors to provide areas for that kind of exploration, but to recognize there are three different levels of comfort, but all are very important. Um, it's important for students to learn about whiteness as an identity, and this is important for all students to learn because this is the context upon which multiculturalism exists, where there is a dominant culture that um, does the labeling and challenges the standards. Um, that's very important. I think it's also important um, to recognize that um, Whites teaching about whites is a very important thing because there is a credibility that students will be able to um, deal with in ways that are safer for them than when um, people of color teach whites about whites. And so that is very important because you also have then people modeling the role of being an ally, the role to increase cultural competency, and the aims, if you will, of social justice. And I personally believe that this is one of the reasons that it is very important to teach multiculturalism, diversity, and related topics in um, the classroom setting, certainly by the college level if they have not gotten it before, and most people haven't gotten it before. Other goals um, 
and the literature certainly bears this out, it's important for students to learn about all areas of privileges, both those that they have and those that other people have, because we all have some areas of privilege, and to know what that means and um, how to react to that and um, how to, if you feel um, areas need to be changed, how to address that. So there is a, a certain amount of learning about how to accept one's label and one's benefits um, without shame or guilt and to then take that shame and guilt sometimes and do something effective with it rather than um, engage in that as a way of sort of opting out of the discussion. Um, Students also um, need to learn um, the various processes that we go through that cause us to other, that is, um, treat other people as if their differences are more powerful and therefore that justifies um, not treating them with respect and treating them with intolerance. And so um, students need to learn ways that we other people in this culture and the ways that they may other people without even perhaps meaning to. The development of um, being uh, an outsider, of not belonging, to develop a comfort with being uncomfortable is another important aspect of self-growth growth and an important aspect of learning about diversity that um, there are settings where one does not, quote, belong and one is not a natural fit. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That might be a very good thing because it means you're exploring things beyond your own worldview and you're growing. Um, developing a sense of cultural um, humility. And this is contrasted with the sense of ethnocentrism that um, when you are humble, you listen and you learn, um, and you're open to learning that being ignorant is not um, an insult. It's not a bad thing. It means that you're open to widening, and that sort of concept, I think, is very helpful for students to develop. Okay, so what are the kinds of pedagogical strategies and approaches that are helpful? using a variety of mediums beyond lecture and textbooks. So it's way beyond just the information. New information, new learning is important, and there are many, many aspects, especially in the field of psychology, that are crucial um, in learning this area, but there are many ways of learning it beyond the written word. Using films, both entertainment films and documentary films, allows students to stand back, to have something to discuss um, in challenging and new ways, um, to provide, as I said before, students an opportunity for self-awareness, um, and that would mean perhaps journaling as well as discussions, as well as even discussing and interviewing um, various members of their uh, friendship groups, their families, etc., to learn more about attitudes and development of um, attitudes in terms of cultural competency, as well as their own culture, and also providing um, opportunities for self-awareness in the public sphere and in discussions among each other. So both personal growth that is only for the student to deal with and personal growth that is reflected in their ability to articulate issues and use language that conveys uh, feelings and understandings with others. And as well as language of questioning, that, that is the type of questioning that is not insulting, that does not um, disrespect someone and does not convey um, a sort of offensive curiosity rather than I'd like to learn more about you and I'd like to share with you more about me. Okay, so examples of pedagogical materials that I certainly have found useful um, and I would encourage um, you to explore as instructors. First of all, because there is such a wide variety of materials, um, I think it's really important to try different things, but to um, sort of make um, an um, estimate of which things are more effective for you to use and which things are less effective for you as a teacher as well as the students that you're dealing with. So if you can have some before and after instruments that you can give your students, I use a um, being white in America scale 
that I've found very useful, but I also know that there are scales about um, privilege and recognizing various kinds of privilege. And if you could administer one or uh, more of these instruments at the beginning of class and administer them at the end of class and then compare class to class based on the different things that you've used, it's information for you as the instructor to how effective um, were certain kinds of things. There are um, texts that are more readable than others in terms of taking a look at um, historical realities that have shaped the context in which we're looking at various aspects of um, diversity and psychological concepts. Um, texts like James Lowen's Lies, My Teacher Told Me, and it just looks at a couple of events or uh, several events in um, history that most um, schools misteach and give students uh, something to discuss among others, as well as to look at some of their background learning, as well as to consider what, what is the investment in teaching things a certain way and leaving out information, and who tells the history. Those are all questions that, again, students often have taken for granted, but this is a perfect context and a perfect topic to really look at that. Um, films like The Shadow of Hate, which is a documentary film that was uh, distributed by the Southern Poverty Law Center that looks at um, the trajectory of a number of groups that immigrated to the United States of America and over the course of time became white people, but they weren't treated like that in the dominant culture. And which groups um, did that and which groups did not do that? Again, really interesting um, uh, film for um, generating student discussion, and also it goes through some heroes who had um, various um, problems in terms of diversity, like being anti-Semitic, and yet they were put forth as heroes. Again, something to discuss in the context of multiculturalism and diversity. White Rage is another um, book that looks at some pivotal points in um, American history and talks about um, how systemic racism um, occurred at these pivotal points and the legacy that exists now in today's society. And again, in light of uh, the Black Lives um, Matter movement, as well as movements like Me Too and other movements, very interesting to look as, at the systemic um, perpetuation of a number of isms that um, make multiculturalism respect diversity very difficult and challenging. There are documentaries like um, Race, the Power of an Illusion, which is a three-part um, documentary that um, looks objectively at the concept of race as a social construct and how that has been utilized and how we make things real by the way we as human beings interact and um, interact with one another, how we make something that We've created um, very real as opposed to a figment of our perception. Them and Us is another non-threatening documentary, very brief, that um, I find students um, have a sigh of relief when they look at because it basically um, reminds students that setting up categories is how we uh, as human beings deal with our society and our life and how we make learning much more interesting that by its nature categorizing of people things and events does not necessarily mean um, discriminating or being prejudiced and how that comes to be there are also examples of other kinds of pedagogical um, materials that i wanted to share with you and some of these films um, may appear to be dated but um, i assure you when students look at them they very much resonate with um, what is going on and it gives them something to discuss. It also provides students, particularly white students, um, an opportunity to say, well, that's not me, but that sure is racist and I'm glad I'm not like that. And that's an important thing for students to be able to do because the tendency is to judge themselves and to shut down or get defensive and deny. And um, some of these things, allow for that not to happen and for students to feel good about themselves, but to also gain some insights into another perspective. White Man's Burden is a uh, film with John Travolta and um, Carrie Belafonte where roles and society is flipped in a very interesting manner. Uh, Crash is a, a film that's a little bit more recent and that has various um, vignettes, real life um, vignette sort of stories. Um, they're not real life. They're Hollywood, but they're stories of 
how discrimination and prejudice may and bias may show itself in ways that perhaps are more acceptable. Um, there was a TV reality series done in 2006 called Black White, and it is available on DVD. And a uh, Caucasian family basically uses makeup um, so that they approach life as an African-American family and an African-American family at the same time and simultaneously um, puts on makeup where they appear to be Caucasian and these two families interact in their world and have discussions about it. And again, it gives students an opportunity to be less personally involved but to discuss really relevant issues. Two-Faced Racism is a book that is based on a study uh, which involved um, students, white students at a predominantly white institution, college, where they were having discussions both in front of um, people um, who were more diverse and um, discussions only um, among themselves, and they journaled their reactions in some of the discussions. And it's um, very easy for students to relate to this because it's very timely and it's um, college-based. And this book is a summary of the students' journaled experiences. Um, it's also um, really helpful to encourage students to use the Internet and to go and to find readings and uh, writings of people who are experiencing things from their worldview, their perspective, and to... Um, see how their perspective is different, and to see what the challenges are. But it's really useful when students do that on their own and summarize it for their fellow students, what that is like for them. Um, they learn a lot from just that process. I have listed um, references that both informed this um, presentation that I think you might also find useful um, in terms of your development of materials. And I also have listed some of the materials that I just referred to in terms of um, using um, films as well as books um, that can trigger discussions for self-journaling and self-reflection. I would be happy for um, any um, input and feedback as well as to provide any other information that I can for you. Um, so this is my contact information. I hope that you have found this um, useful, and I thank you um, for your attention. And that's all I have to share with you. Thank you.